hello hello guys hello uh, how are we all doing today i hope that we're pretty snazzy um for those of you folks that have come along and you are here today for learn to draw evil plants and hero fairies uh, i have some good news uh, that is exactly what we are about to do um we are going to be doing um some very nifty looking fairies who are not going to take any nonsense uh, we've got wands we've got um, wings we've got all sorts uh, and we are going to be doing some very very nasty looking plants today too uh, with big long tongues uh, they're going to have some nasty leaves that are pointing towards the fairy that we're going to eat. We're going to have a grumpy cactus. And we're also going to have uh, a few other little bits and pieces too. Now, um, what we're going to do today as well, uh, we're going to do one little extra teeny weeny super secret bonus thing. Because I very rarely do um, colouring on my designs. But what I do like to do is to try to sneak some extra little hidden uh, messages into my work too. And so I'm going to show you something. This is, this is something that I've uh, done myself on my own artworks. And you might want to have a go at it too. Um, so what this is, this is um, some moths that are floating around the edge of my artwork, and we're going to be doing some of these too. It could be butterflies or moths, it's up to you. But we're going to sneak some words written on in Morse code. So if you look very carefully, you can see that on the wings of the butterflies, um, there are some thick bands and some thin bands. And what that does is it gives us a little hidden message, which I will show you how to do later on today. And I'll show you how to do them. Uh, and you can hide a message. You could perhaps hide your initials on your own artwork. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Uh, and on just about all of the artworks that I do, including this one here, which is Cheddar and Flump win the great unit. Uh, sorry, win the great rainbow race. Uh, again, I've got some little hidden messages written down there on the wings of the, the uh, moths. So if you would like to do that, guys, um, have a good think. Um, it might be that you want to do your initials or you want to do something else, um, but I will tell you exactly how to do that. Um, anyway, right. Before we get on to uh, onto all the Morse Cody bits at the end, we're going to have a go at actually doing this bit, the really pretty bit. And so um, we need to get started. We need to get our pens out. Um, I am on pain of death told that I must keep it to 45 minutes today um, because that is what we are scheduled to do. Um, and, uh, I, I, <laughs> I've got a lovely wife who I don't want to upset. So that's what we're going to do. And this is basically what we're going to end up with, something that looks pretty nifty like this. So what I'd like you guys to do, if you can get your nice sheets of paper out, um, I'm going to start off today uh, by doing, down in this bottom corner down here, I'm going to do a grumpy, grumpy cactus. And the cactus is a nice one. It's a good one to start off with because it's really, really quick and easy to do. Um, I have one story, actually, which is about a whole family of cactuses which are trying to thwart a superhero. And they're all different shapes and sizes, but it's really, really nifty to, uh, to sketch them out and make them look grumpy. And there's a trick to putting the spines on that I'm going to show you today. Now, the way that we do this... We start off by drawing uh, from the very bottom of our page and we go up at a little bit of an angle. So we're leaning away just a little bit. It's not going straight and it's not 45 degrees. It's just leaning a little bit. OK, and this needs to come up down in the corner because we need to put in an arm that's looking upwards like this as cactuses have. So once you've got a little line off the bottom of your page, we can have him then coming along. So this is, for those of you that are sort of good at your maths, you'd know that this is pretty much at 45 degrees to the arm that we, sorry, to the line we've just done. But this line comes off and it's going to go up and round. So it's got to go a fair, fair way out because he needs to have a nice sort of substantive arm. And then it's going to curve up like this. Okay. And this is giving us this bit here. This is going to be his arm poking up. Once we get up, we need to then come back over. And it's really important that we do it so that it's the right sort of thickness for a nice arm, because we have to then go back across over here. And this is where it's going to join up with the body of the cactus. OK. Um, our cactus is going to keep then going in this direction upwards. That's going to be his head. And the, the head is really easy to do. It's actually just a nice big N. OK, a nice big curve like that. And if you want to, you might find this easier. And I'm, I like showing you multiple ways to do the same thing, because then you guys can decide what works best for you. Um, I'm going to leave this time a little gap rather than drawing the arm. This time I'm going to leave a space. 
and come down. And you can see there, I've left a space that's the same size as the other arm that I've got. And that's a really um, nifty trick. You can do it either way. You can keep going, you know, and doing the line all the way around like we did there. Or, and I do like to do this, leave a little gap. And that sometimes works better. So when you come to do your own cactuses in future, maybe put them in the background of, say, a desert scene or something. That's exactly what you can do. Now, our cactus is going to have a very similar arm over here. And this time, rather than it being sort of a straight line uh, going up off here, I'm going to maybe make this one just curve up a bit. So I've got a little line there for his arm. And this one's going to be a bit more curvy, like he's shaking his fist at the pesky fairy who's come to save the day. Um, now, I'm just going to have a quick look at uh, who is saying hello today, because we've got a few folk here. We've got a good number of folks joining in today. Um, let's have a quick look and see who we have got that has come along to join in. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, we've got uh, Pete, Indiana, Allison. Hello. Hi, Annie and Emily. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, let me just double check. Right. Uh, we've got a few guys that have come in to join in today, so that's good. Um, we need to now give him a face. We've got to make him look grumpy. And he's going to be staring up at the sky, up over here where our fairy is going to be. Okay. So this guy, he's not going to have his eyes smack bang in the middle. He's going to have them off to one side on his head. So we put two lines like this over here and so far he doesn't look too grumpy he looks quite cheery and how do we make him look grumpy you ask well it's all about the eyebrows so what we do once we've got our two little lines here um <laughs> hello to autumn ruth and anthea yeah hi or whoever's using the, those accounts because i think a lot of people have got their they're on their mum and dad's account aren't they uh, right we will do a line down like this and it curves back up and that suddenly makes our cactus look very grumpy indeed um, the eyebrows are the most expressive part of your face they do a lot more than even the mouth you could leave that you don't have to draw a mouth on him and he will look grumpy now we are going to add a mouth because we want him to look proper mad and the way to do that this time is underneath his um, his eyes that we've just done so coming down here we're going to start drawing the mouth and his mouth is going to be taken off to one side like he's really going grr, 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 grump through the side of his face um, uh, hi Charlie and Finn and Beth from Beverly. Hi Mike. Uh, hi Michael, Cleo, Latchland and Isla. Lovely to have you guys joining us today. Thank you. So here we go. What we do, we do a little grump like that. Now he looks a little bit grumpy, like a little bit pouty there. Okay, but that's not all. So once you've done a little unhappy curve for his mouth, we then take this side of the mouth that we've done and we swing it round like that. And now he looks like he's got a really grumpy bottom lip that's coming up. And he looks very frustrated. We can even add some lines like this. And that makes it look like his teeth are gnashing together there too. Um, the tricky bit of doing a cactus is actually the spines. And I'm going to show you the best way that I've come up with to do them. It's weird because you want them to look a little bit random, like it's a natural shape. But at the same time, you want them to look like they are... Um, you know, uniform and sort of pointing in the same direction. So I'm going to show you this trick. And what I'd recommend is start off doing it first um, on the side of his body down here. And we're going to do either side of his body first, and then we're going to do the head. Because if you kind of mess up down here, people won't notice. But if you mess up on the face, it is going to be a lot more noticeable. So here we go. What we do is we draw a little line that is half on your cactus and half off. Okay, like that. And then the next one isn't like that. Instead, it's behind your cactus. And these lines that I'm doing, they don't all have to be the same perfect length. They don't have to come out to the same distance away from his body. But here we go. We do this again. So we do one that's going over the line. And there's a bit on the inside of the line and a bit on the outside. And all we're doing is that again and again. And the trick is make them a little bit wonky. I say wonky. They don't want to be perfectly um, what we call perpendicular. They don't want to all be facing in the same direction. So having them a little bit in the wrong direction every now and again is a good way to go. Okay. So I've done that on that side and you guys can do that too. Then on the other side, same thing. Making sure that I'm alternating between... Things like that. that are just Some are overlapping and some aren't. Okay. And you can do this all the way around your cactus. 
And every now and again, if you really want to mix it up, throw in one little spike that is, say, uh, a bit longer, or you know, maybe do two in a row that are going over the boundary of his arm. And here we go. Now, once you get going on this, it's kind of quick, but it's super important that you don't just have them all overlapping. It needs to be varied up. So every now and again, like I've just done there, you maybe put two on that are overlapping the, the little boundary of his arm. And then maybe have perhaps two that are just hiding behind. And doing this all the way around the edge, it's not going to be enough on its own to make him look like a cactus. We're going to have to do a wee bit more too. But you can keep going then. And always point in. Some of them can be a bit longer than the others too as well. So if you want to make an extra long one over here or an extra long one there, that's going to make them look really authentically cactusy. Okay. And then we need to do the inside of him. Now, this is where it gets to be a little bit sort of a um, bit more random. Okay. And so the way that we do that is by clicking, not by clicking, sorry, is by drawing down here just on the side of him. We still want to have these ones which are going to be inside and on his body. They want to be pointing kind of towards the outside, but not perfectly. These ones are going to be a little bit more wonky, just a bit. And I'm doing them close to the other ones, but not right on top of them. So each one is kind of pointing towards the edge of him. And I'm not doing any right in the middle of his body. There we go. And so you can see I'm, I'm gradually working my way in towards his tummy. Okay. And then because of what we call perspective, as we get closer and closer into the um, the, the cactus's tummy, we actually start to draw them shorter. And they can be a little bit more vertical too which means that they're not going to be all pointing outwards. Instead, these ones that are in the middle of his body can be a bit more random in how they're going, maybe a little bit more vertical like this. And before you know it, you've got a cactus. And this cactus has got spines all the way around the outside that are pointing away from his body. And then as we come in towards the middle, they're a little bit more random. Extra one there for good measure. OK, so that's our cactus. I'm hoping you've got something that looks a little bit like that. Um, it's a really nifty little trick. Um, do that anytime you have to draw a cactus. Uh, I will see about putting online later uh, one of the artworks that I did for a sample book. Uh, and it was a beautiful field of cactuses all wearing sunglasses and looking super cool. And I drew so many different types of cactuses. I loved it. So if you guys have something that, look that looks like that, brilliant. If you haven't finished off the spines, don't worry, because you can always come back and finish those later. What we're going to do next is our spooky plant. OK, our meanie plant that is going to be trying to eat our fairy. OK, our lovely fairy up here. And so to do this, we're going to need to do a big curvy long stalk. It's going to have to go taller than our cactus. And we're going to have a big chompy teeth at the end. OK, um, I understand that there is a popular video games franchise that uses uh, plants that look a little bit like this. Um, so I won't name them just for copyright reasons. But here we go. Here's how we do it. I'm going to be drawing my head of my plant somewhere up here. And the body's going to be snaking around down here. OK. Now, I am going to do this from the bottom upwards. OK. And so if you guys can see that, that's where we're going to start. And it's actually quite easy to do. From here, we're just going to do a big snaking S going all the way up. So it's going to be going up, round, and there like that. Oh, hey, that wasn't very good, Andy. Make that line thicker so that we can't see that you accidentally made it a bit woggly and wiggly. There we go. OK, so I've got what's basically a nice big S shape there. And you guys can have that too. To make it look like we've got um, a, a real plant here, what we do is we make it a little bit thinner at the top than we do at the bottom. Basically, all plants are thicker at the bottom near the ground. And then as you get towards the head of the plant, they get thinner. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing now as well. So once you've done this S, which is a nice big sort of sweeping shape, and this, this hasn't been too hard to do. This is quite a nice gentle shape to do. We then need to be really delicate and careful. I've got a brand new pen today and it's um, it's lovely, but occasionally I have to go back and make my lines a little bit thicker. Um, what we then have to do is this. And you might want to watch this first and then try it afterwards. I'll waffle on about something else and, and you guys can have a go. 
but we start up here and this is going to be sort of i'm going to say it's going to start off that thin up there but i'm going to be very careful that as i follow my shape down it's going to get gradually coming around the corner a bit thicker bit by bit by bit i'm actually going to turn my page as well you guys might want to do this too so as you do it you do it so it gets a bit thicker and thicker as it's going along and this is a tricky thing especially if you're um you know quite new to drawing if you've not done loads of drawing before and it's going to snake around like this and towards the bottom it's going to get really nice and thick there we go okay so thick strong chunky base for our plant our super evil plant and this goes for anything that you're designing as well like if you're ever doing trees or vines or something like that or you know whips and ropes whatever um, make sure that they're thicker at one end than at the other okay very important um, I'm also just going to add a tiny little curve just at the top there like so uh, and that's where my plant head is going to go um, so I did say that I'd waffle for a minute whilst you guys do this. Uh, I think you guys are having fun there. Hello from Owen in Nottingham. Hi Owen, I hope you're having fun. And Sorrel Loftus, uh, I think that's probably your mummy's account, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, lovely, that's lovely to see. Um, yeah, right. We're now going to see about doing uh, the the <laughs> the fun bit, the uh, the scary mouth and teeth and the head of the plant. And the way to do this um, is to actually just leave a little gap. OK, I'm going to leave a little gap here at the top and I'm going to <clears throat> put just a little mark here and that's where the back of my plant head is going to be. But the reason I've left this gap is that we're going to need to have the little extra flicks off the uh, the side of the plant, the, uh, the extra leaves. So let's do that. Um, we'll put that little line in. It's just stayed away from here, just ever so slightly. And that lets us know where we can go up to with our um, our head of our plant and then we've got the space for the leaves. So here we are. It's going to be, it's not quite a, a circle. Instead, it starts off being a circle. It starts off being a lovely circle. And it curves up and around like this. And at this point, you think, yeah, circle, Andy. Easy. What about the other way? Yeah, we're doing a circle this way too. Great. But something interesting happens when we get to the very outer points of our circle. Rather than it being a circle and joining up, which is what would happen here, it actually gets a bit more um, straight liney at the top and the bottom. And that's because we need to make the mouth look like it's open. If the plant's mouth was closed, it would be a circle, but it's not because we have to do, it's like a great big C really, the letter C. We have to do a straight line there and a straight line here. They're gradually coming together. They're a little bit sort of leaning together. But that is how we do the mouth. Okay, It's going to make it look like the jaws are nice and wide. Now at this point, once you've got this shape, so the nice big C with the straight lines coming off it, we can now put on the back um, the, the uh, little flicks on the back of the flower, the little petals that are coming off the old crusty ones. And the way we do that is quite easy. Um, I'm going to start near the middle here. And I'm going to do a zigzaggy woggly line like that. And it's a bit random, wiggly waggly out. And to make it wiggly waggly back, I'm going to go like so. Okay, that's one. Do another one. Wiggly waggly out. Wiggly waggly back in. And you don't have to be really precious about this. Wiggly waggly out. Wiggly waggly in. If you want to make it look a little bit more 3D as well, here's a tip. Make the two ones here that are near the stalk. Make those fat. And then for the ones that are um, further away, so they're not closest to the stalk, make these ones just a little bit thinner and not quite as wiggly waggly. You want to be a little bit flatter. And doing that can just make it look like it is a little bit more 3D. You could even have, say, an extra little pointy bit sticking out there, like that. Um, you could add another one sticking out here if you really wanted to. But it's, it's up to you. You can do as many as you want. Okay. All right. We now need to make it look like we've got a lovely big array of oh, our teeth that are just going to go chomp, 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 a chew, nom, 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 up here. Um, and this bit is possibly the trickiest bit. So I'm going to show you the tips that I use to make sure that I get it right. Um, if it helps you, what you can do, uh, and, and the power of the jaws make, um, is really important. It wants to look like big, powerful, chunky jaws. I'm going to use a little dotted line here just to help me. You don't need it. 
if you guys can just remember this. Okay, I've drawn a dotted line there. That is where the middle of the jaw is going through. So there's the back of the, the, the flower's head, dotted line. And to make it look like it's got really nice big wide mouths, uh, sorry, a really big wide mouth, what I'm going to do, around about, you know, we said it was a circle, around about the middle of where the circle would be if I'd kept it going. So I'm just going to join that up there. Around about here, this point here, which would be the middle of our imaginary circle, that is where we're going to make it look like our mouth is opening up from. Okay. And what we do is we do a big curve that goes up and round like this. We do another one that goes the other way and it goes down, gently curves towards the edge, goes a little bit past it and flicks up. Okay. And this is so important. If you do it too far to the edge, it won't look right. So it's really important that you get the, uh, the little point there that I've just doodled in. And I'll remove those lines now because they were just there as a guide. Oh no. Oh no. Look at that. I've done it too soon after my I put my ink on the page and it is smudged. Rats. Oh dearie me. Oh well, I'll have to tidy that up later on using a bit of Tipex or something. Never mind. Just goes to show even this kind of thing happens to illustrators who do it for a living. Right. Once we've got these little flicks on there, those little lines, we're then going to um, have that line come down a tiny bit. So it's almost like it's going to be a love heart, that sort of a thing. And this is going to be the thick lips that we've got there. And the thick lips are important because we're then going to have another line that comes in like this. It wants to get thinner towards the middle. And then down here too, we have ooh, lips that get a little bit thicker at the end. Okay, So if you can make it so that they're thinner at one end and thicker on, at the top and the bottom, that's great. Now then. We now need to add some teeth, and my teeth, uh, the teeth are the favourite bit for me of doing this. But what's really important is that we start in the middle and work our way up. And here's why. We want to start it by doing some teeth like this, but they're going to overlap. So you have to do one that's in the middle. You do a little curve for the bottom bit, and then a curve up for the top. And then overlapping, so that means we're starting halfway down this tooth. We're going to do another one. And these teeth each time are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we get towards the middle, uh, sorry, the top of the mouth. Here we go. Another nice big tooth. And another one. Oh. And you can even have an extra one pointing out just at the very top if you want to make it look like it's really got some pointy teeth going on. Same at the bottom. This time maybe a little bit smaller. But again, starting from the middle and working our way. Oh, <laughs> I'm so silly. Um, I'm working from the middle. I need to leave the tongue as well. So I will just say, don't have them overlapping. I should have mentioned that before I actually uh, started doodling them. If you want them overlapping, that's cool. It just means that you won't have a tongue sticking out. But if you want them to overlap um, a little bit, so the top ones and the bottom ones are touching, that's fine. All right. Anyway, here we go. And we're going to make these big, big pointy teeth really super duper scary, okay? Big, chompy teeth. Nom, 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 nom. And again, maybe an extra one just hiding around there. So we've got our great big chompy teeth. You'll probably work out as well, if you wanted to make it look wider, like it was, you know, right about to eat something like a little flower or a bumblebee or whatever, you can do that. That's not a problem. Um, all you have to do is just maybe make the mouth so it's a little bit wider and that those lines are pointing outwards a little bit more. Uh, the tongue is then going to be sticking out, guys. Now, my tongue, I'm going to have um, as a little wiggly thing, almost like a sort of snake's tongue coming out. So to do that, I'm going to go right in the middle of these teeth here. I'm going to have it sticking out like that. Okay. And that's my tongue. Um, we want it to look a little bit like it's a, a sort of a, a nasty plant too. We don't want it to just look smooth and, and um, things all over. So I'm going to put some little bumps on it. And the bumps are very easy to do. If you imagine a letter row that's been squished, nearly one of those. Um, I found that since drawing these for real and uh, drawing these for, for years and years and being a real illustrator it always looks best if you don't quite join the O up if you just leave a little gap I'm going to put three at the top and three at the bottom if you put those little O's on it makes it look bumpy um, but for some reason it just looks better it doesn't look quite as artificial um, if you if you don't join the, the little O's up 
So really, really simple little squished O's. Um, somebody's just asked, how did you rub, the, rub out the ink? Uh, I can't rub out the ink, so I'm going to have to either tidy that up in Photoshop later on, uh, or I'll have to get some a little bit of Tipex or something out. Or just go, I totally meant to do that. He's wearing lipstick and it's smudged. Oh, I could do that. I could give him black lipstick and make it look like it's smudged. That would work. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. Um, anyway, right, the final bit for our plant before we move on is that we're going to do a curve here like this and that curve wants to be pointing it's right at the back of um the big stalk that we did it wants to be pointing whew, towards the front where his mouth is and then we do another one like that so it's actually like a moon shape really we're going to do another one down here so near the bottom of our our little fella like that Dead easy. It's like a semicircle and then a really big long, long stretched one. And finally, one up here. Now, this one isn't going to be a semicircle. This one is going to be an S shape. I'll show you what it's going to look like. There's your S. Make it a teeny bit longer. Um, we're then going to do another S, but this is perhaps the trickiest leaf. It wants to be like that. And these leaves, to make them look realistic and like a leaf we're then going to put down the middle of them what we call a bisecting line and that splits them into two equal parts mm. you can be gentle with them you can make them a little bit wiggly because they're not really solid defined outlines so if they're a little bit wiggly woggly like that it makes it just look it makes it look a little bit more like a leaf and then ditto for this one over here a little bit wiggly and woggly you can see that it's nice and fine right Scary plant, job done. Uh, now we need our superhero fairy, our superhero fairy who is going to save the day. And I will say to you folks, if you're running out of space, I say this every single week, do not worry, do not worry at all about, say, getting an extra sheet of paper, popping it underneath, and if you have to draw your fairy wings going off the edge of the page, do that. Do that a million times before you actually just try and squidge your fairy onto the edge of the paper. Okay? It's so, so, so important that you don't just sort of, um, you know, fudge it and try and squidge your fairy on so she ends up looking compressed like she's been through the washing machine okay um okie cokey uh we need a name for the plant i've not got one i think we should call it um ooh, captain chompy he's an evil plant who works for an evil villain he's captain chompy right uh right so the final bit then is that we're going to have our fairy and our fairy is going to be pointing her magic wand at this evil scary plant and the way i'm going to do this um, is by starting off with the head. Now the head wants to be up here a little bit above our plant so that she can be aiming her, her magic wand down at him. And so I'm getting quite close to the top of my page here, but that's not a problem. Um, what I am going to do is start off by drawing her chin. I always start with my character's chin because that lets me know where everything else is going to go around it. So here we go. I'm going to do up here her chin. And it's a nice gentle curve like this. It's almost like a Nike sort of tick. And as I said to you guys in the week when I did learn how to draw your own superheroes, you might remember I did say if you draw a square chin that's only got a tiny little curve on the corner of it, that makes it look manly. If you do a gentle curve like this, it's typically more feminine and delicate. Okay, so worth, uh, worth bearing in mind. Now, I've done this um, because I want to have some space here. I've stopped because I want to have some uh, space for her hair, which is going to go up above. Okay. So this fairy is going to have um, some hair that's going to be parted to, at one side. She's going to have a little flower there too. And we're going to do that hair and we're going to join it up uh, right here at the, back of her, at the back of her chin. So here we go. This hair is going to come up. It's going to be a little kill, almost like a, a little hill. It's going to go over, down and then just flick up like this. And this means that we've now got where her hair is, is going to go, her hairline. Um, and we're going to then put in her eyes so you can start to see how this is going to work. Okay. She's going to be looking to one side towards our plant. And she's not messing today. She's grumpy. So she too is going to have a grumpy eyebrow, just like the cactus that we did too. Now, she is a goodie and she's allowed to be a little bit moody, but we're not going to draw a grumpy face on there too, you know, like an unhappy mouth. Uh, we're going to leave it just at that because you can have a lot just said from the eyebrows. Now, at this point, 
we then do a little curve around. So just where her uh, her face started and her hair ends, we're then going to do a little bit that comes around here, and it's going to flick round, and it's going to go up, up, up. Just watch this, guys. It's going to come down like so. And I'm deliberately leaving a little gap here. And that is so important, that little space, because that's where we're going to pop a flower on for her. And the flower is going to be round with lots of little petals. So if you want to, folks, just now you can pop that line in for a hair. I am being a little bit naughty here because I always said don't try and squidge something in and then I just try to squidge it in myself. Um, but what I'll do, I'll put in her flower now, which is going to be here like this. And then it's just a circle. This flower is then going to go round and round and round, all the way round, like so. Okay. She's then going to have around the back here an extra little bit of hair. And this is going to curve around and underneath. And her chin can then curve back up behind this little bit of hair. Okay. Um, I am, because I've, I have run out of space, and that's a very silly thing to do, um, but, you know, such is life. Um, I'm going to see about putting a little bit of extra paper on myself, but you guys, you guys can see what the, the actual finish thing would be. So here we go. I'm going to, a little bit of extra paper there, look. Um, I'm going to pop a little bonnet on, uh, not a bonnet, uh, a little bun for her hair, and the way we'll do that is by going up here like this, and doing a little... It's like um, sort of a little sun that's poking over a hill. It's just a gentle circle that's hiding behind there. And then for her bonnet, I can do a nice big one. Uh, her bonnet, sorry. I keep calling it a bonnet. I don't know about girls' haircuts, and I get the, the words wrong very often. This is a bun on top of her head. There we go. Okay. And so she has now got a nice bun on top of her head where all her hair is um, collected in one big pile. Okay. Um, you can colour in the hair and the, the, the flower, whatever colour you may choose, okay? And at this point, we need to make it look like she has got her magic wand and she is zapping this guy, okay? So to do that, from underneath her arm, we put out one nice straight arm. So underneath her chin, we put out one straight arm. Uh, I keep getting my words wrong today, and that's because I got up with a little fella at about half past five, and I am absolutely zonked. He's a gorgeous little fella, he's three years old, um, but I am a little bit tired and my words are getting muddled. So apologies if I use the wrong word. And this is pointing directly towards his mouth. Um, we then need, at the end of this, and this has gone just past the edge of her head, we're then going to do, it's not quite a circle, it's a circle, but it's a little bit squashed. The reason it's squashed is because it makes it look like she's holding onto her wand super tight. Now, I'm going to have a little wand here. And you could give them, like, say, a Harry Potter wand or a star wand, whatever you want. I'm going to give mine, like, a Harry Potter wand today, which is a little bit pointy. And a little bit zigzaggy, like a master, um, like the master wand in Harry Potter. But let's say that you did want to do uh, some sort of um, star wand. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's very, very easy to do. I'll take a little extra bit of paper here. Um, all you have to do uh, to make a, a little star wand would be to do your wand... As a straight line and then at the end I would always recommend turning your page like this and you do two little legs that are going off your wand like this okay so it's almost like a pointy arrow and then the other uh, sorry to make them into proper star legs you then do two extra points like that and from there once you've got the two legs it's dead easy two little arms going slightly up like so Coming across, and then there's your top. Okay, so if you want to give her a star wand, that's fine, absolutely not a problem. I'm giving her like a, a magic Harry Potter one, like I say today, um, and that's absolutely hunky dory as well. If you wanted to have a holding anything else, you could have a threatening him with a sausage uh, or a potato or a bag of crisps, whatever you want, it's completely up to you. So here we go. Her arm is then going to come back. We're going to do another nice straight line there, going back towards her body. And at this point, we need to put her tummy in. And because she's a fairy, she's going to be wearing sort of a, a tutu kind of uh, thing. And we're going to do a nice big round tummy that's going to come underneath. 
I think that there's way too much pressure on fairies uh, to look a certain way and have a certain body type. And I think it's way, way better for them to say have a nice happy tummy full of food rather than being worried about being a certain weight. Now, for this fairy, I'm going to put her in a tutu. So as I start to curve her tummy back in, at this point, I'm going to go nice and gentle. I'm going to, it's not quite a circle, but I'm going to start to curve back up like this. Um, I'm going to stop before I get back up towards her, her body here. It's almost like a sort of a circle shape. But the reason I'm going to stop is because I need to put her other arm in. And her other arm is going to be a nice round circle. She's clenching her fist because she means business. And then we need to put her arm on the back. And that's dead easy to do. All we have to do here. It's not a circle, it's just a bit more elongated than that. It's like the, a big letter N that just goes up there. Okay. Um, we need to make it look like she's wearing a tutu. So the way that we do that um, is to put what, we, what I call the little square. It's like a, a little square chest, um, a little square on a chest. And it comes down like this and goes back up. And if you imagine, it's because it forms this kind of square shape. The trick is to have it so that the bottom of it is running in line with the arm. Okay, But this is one mad fairy. She is not happy at all about having to deal with this grumpy, grumpy plant. Um, I'm now going to just put in the rest of her arm as well. So you can see here um, where her shoulder is going to go, where this, this little line here curves up. And I'm going to put the rest of her arm in. Um, we need to give her a nice little... Um, tutu there on the bottom of her her outfit so the way that we do this is to take um, some lines out either side just at the bottom of her her tummy like this and this will work by the way if you're ever interested in drawing say ballerinas or anything too um, these lines come out and then all the way around her, her body we start to put in a few extra little lines that are coming down like this and I would recommend that you add a couple more, a couple of extra ones right at the edge. So there's a few really closely bunched together at the, the, the back of her by a bum and at the front where her tummy is. Put an extra couple of little lines in there. And they, they don't really matter how long they are. Don't make them super duper long. Um, but I've not worried about which ones are long ones and short ones here. And the reason I've not worried about that is because I'm then going to see about joining them all up. And I can make ones longer as I need to. So, for instance, I can say, put a little curve in there, and then I can put in another one here. I can then go up and down, and all you have to do is just join these together in a wiggly-woggly sort of a fashion. You can, Like I say, you can make them a bit longer if you want to. And you just decide, by doing, say, some little wiggly-woggles on the end of these shapes, how long or short you want that tutu to be. Okay, there we go. So now she's wearing a tutu. So it's a bunch of lines all coming out, and I'll just join them up. Wiggly woggly lines joining each of them all together. She'll need some sandals, of course, as well. You can't be a fairy without sandals, it's the law. And to achieve this, it's really simple. We need to put a foot on the back of her body. And what I do here to show that she's flying is I put her bum, uh, sorry, her feet in line with her bum, like that. So they're right behind to one side. That's one foot. And then we're going to have another foot here to make it look like sandals. Well, pretty simple. All you have to do is add an extra thick line on the side of the foot, like so. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then we put a little strap on like that, nice and curvy. And that's the strap that's holding her feet, um, her sandals on her feet. Okay. Um, if you've got a fairy the size of Hulk, then do you know what, Pete, Indiana, Allison, I think that's A-OK. -okay. It means that nobody's going to mess with that fairy. OK. Uh, Eloise and I would like to know what pen I'm using. I'm using a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Black 199. I don't know if you can see that there, guys. Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush. And it is nice because you can get thin, thin bits and thick bits as you so desire. OK. Um, now, she's not staying in the air just by um, willpower. She's actually staying in the air because she has got um, wings keeping her afloat. And to show you guys how we do that, um, it's really easy. We start off behind her head, okay? And this wants to be just from where, you know, say the back of her hair is. You want to do a, a nice long flick out like this, and it wants to curve round. 
So it's kind of like the letter J. If you imagine this way up, it's a letter J. But it's, it's aiming upwards, okay? It's shooting off upwards into the sky. We then need to do um, some little bumps as we come down. So now that we've done a letter J, all this next bit is, is a little bump like that. And then another one. And each time these bumps want to take us progressively closer and closer towards your little fairy's feet. So I'm going to get closer and closer. Oh, look, see, I'm getting closer and closer. And then again, there we go. OK, and that's how we do fairy wings. Um, we're going to have an extra wing as well because she's got two. So this one, pretty easy, just above where we did our first J for the wing. For the second one, we just do the same shape again. OK. Um, there are patterns that are worthwhile putting onto your um, wings to make them look super realistic. And I would recommend using a nice thin pen to do this um, or going really lightly with your pencil. Don't press too hard. What we do is we put, and I'll, I'll just do it on this first one, we do a thin line, and like our plant, starts off thin, and then it's moving further and further away from the top. There we go. And again, that just makes it look like the wings are thin um, and attached to her up here, and then they grow and get further. Um, they spread out as they get further away. Um, to make it look like there's um, you know, some, some little veins and things on there, what we also do, where we've got this bump here, we do a nice thin bump here too. I keep going down like that. And in this bit, what I like to do is to just do a little spiral like this. So it's almost like a letter C or something, but just around the back. Okay. Um, you can, if you've got space as well, put another one of those just there. But that's how we do fairy wings, guys. Um, we're nearly there. There's a few little bits left to do. Um, and I did promise you guys Morse code as well, didn't I? Morse code, oh yes. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. It's dead, dead easy. Um, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take an image here and I'm going to run, run it through my printer right this very second. And I'm going to show you how we can put Morse code onto our butterflies that we're going to have. Okay. Um, I'll also show you how we can um, do some really easy clouds. Clouds are dead easy and they're wonderful because they take up loads of space. What you do is you start to draw a circle. You get bored. You go, actually, I want that circle. I'm going to start a new one. And then you stop with that one. You don't finish it. And it always looks good to have little circles next to big ones. Like so. And that gives you a cloud over there. We can also have one. Uh, just down here, a little cloud, they're flying, flying past as well. So I'm going to do one down here, then I get bored, change my mind. No, I want a little one. No, I don't. I want a big one. Nah, actually, I do want a little one after all. Now I remember. No, no, I don't. I want a big one again. Oh, what am I like? And then at that point, okay. And that is how we can make it look really quickly like your fairies are flying up above the clouds. Super, super easy and super, super simple. Okay. All uh, right. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a little butterfly and a bee, and uh, I'll show you how to put a Morse code on the uh, the wings of the, the butterfly. Bees are dead easy. Um, a bee is really simple and really fun to do. So all you do is draw a bee. It's a rectangle with curvy corners. So, super simple stuff. And then what I like to do is to just keep adding an extra little line on the back of our bee, like this, again and again and again. And you can add as many of those as you want, but we just need to colour the one in that's next to the face. And then we put some little legs coming on underneath. So six little legs. They're all flicking backwards like he's flying at speed. And then there we go. Grumpy eyes as well, because he means business. In fact, he means business because he's got a stinger. Like that. And two nice little um, wings on top. So they're dead, dead easy to do. It's a big curve and then one going the other way. And that's our grumpy bumblebee. Um, right, the final thing, the very last bit, and this is a, a sort of a 30 second job. This is putting a little butterfly in that's going to be supporting our fairy too. And we're going to use this, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, make a note of uh, 
what this is called, it's called an International Morse Code Translator. You can use this to put secret messages in your artworks. Um, here's how we do a butterfly, and then we'll put a little message on the wings. So we will now do a little round dot for the butterfly's head. And I'll mine that out. I'm then going to, at 45 degrees, do an elongated circle like that. And then finally, for the bottom, I'm going to do a slightly chunkier one like that. Okay? Uh, if you find it easiest to just do a circle and then a, a long squidge and another circle, that's fine. It still works. And here, from this, I'm going to turn my little butterfly this way up so it's easier to, ooh, easier for me to do. We need to then do our butterfly wings that go right underneath the head. They go up and out and then back round. Okay? And they want to tuck in onto the body. Same here on the other side. Up, curve round and back in. And then we need to have two extra little ones at the bottom. And these ones want to be angled down. Like that, okay. Uh, we need to give some antennas. I could maybe make the head a teeny bit bigger there. Antennas are dead easy, just two little flicks, like so. And let's say that you wanted to put your name on, or you wanted to make it so that people knew that this was yours and hide a message in there. Well, what we do, the symbol for an A, because my name's Andy Sanders, is a dot and a dash. That means the letter A in Morse code. And the letter S. Where is that rest? There we go, it's three dots. And so what I like to do, I like to do it as stripes. So I could do, say, a really thin stripe here, and then a really thick one. So you can see that, look, a thin and then a thick one. And if I do that on one wing, that's the letter A in Morse code on my, uh, on my butterfly. And then for the S, which is three dots there, I can do three really thin stripes. Like that, okay. And now, if I was to colour this in, if I was to say get my my pens out and start shading in, I could. I mean, you can make yours as bright and beautiful as you want. And I'll, whilst I'm colouring in, I'll just leave that there so you can see what your name would be or your initials would be. You can end up with a little hidden message. And if you do say twenty butterflies, you could write all sorts of messages on there. Okay. Um, Maybe do some orange for the back wings or something like that. And so there you have it, guys. Butterfly with a secret message on. Fantastic fairy who is coming to have a go. And then a big scary plant with a nasty cactus there too. Um, I would love to see your versions of these. I would absolutely love to see them. And I will be giving away a free book to somebody that does the best, best... Um, fairy fighting a super scary plant and what I would like you to do tell your mums and dads uh, that they will be able to enter my competition for winning a free book by putting the work up online and if they um, put the tag on either Twitter or Instagram or on Facebook of draw with Andy I will keep an eye out and this weekend I will decide who has done that's all one word by the way I will decide who has done the best and they will be getting a free copy of my award-winning picture book. Um, I have something special planned for next week and uh, just to let you know, uh, I am planning on doing a school visit, a free school visit uh, for someone during lockdown. So it might be a remote session, um, but if you've got some, uh, some, some classmates who you know love drawing, um, and might like a free drawing workshop and a visit or you know some books and things like this then have a good think who that is uh, maybe tell your teacher about this fantastic guy uh, andy sanders who does draw with andy drawing sessions and um yeah if you could encourage them to join next week i'll be doing uh, an announcement about how people could maybe get me to come and visit their school and do a workshop with them for free so um that would be lovely and super duper fun uh, but in the meantime do your lovely drawings put your names on them and please, please, please make sure your mum and dad use the hashtag draw with Andy. Um, so there we go, guys. Thank you very, very much. I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope you've had fun. Um, I've certainly enjoyed doing this. And uh, I, I love my, my little um, superhero fairy who's not going to be taking any uh, nonsense today. I think it looks great. And uh, I can't wait to see yours too. Thank you very, very much, guys. All the best. Bye bye.